Well, this is going to be interesting here. From what I can see of the diagram here, they want this piece here to go up that little hole there. And that's going to be a little bit hard to do, maybe. Let's see here. I haven't tried it yet. This is the first time. By golly, it does. Look at that. Okay. Now this little piece here, I used to know what that was called, and I forgot. <laughs> I kept wanting to say the word clevis, but somehow that just didn't seem right. Turns out it is right. It's a clevis fastener. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little tiny hole right there. And somehow, this is supposed to just sort of clip in there. Oh my goodness, that's small. Maybe if I use a different tweezer, see what I can do. I got it. Holy cow. Okay. I didn't mean to be getting all religious on you there, but uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that to work. Now I wonder, is it supposed to stay like this? Or am I supposed to glue it that way? Well, there's one. Two more to go. Okay, for this piece right here, L26, it has to be attached to a piece called Photo Etch C8. And this is going to be the very first time that I've ever done Photo Etch. So, anyway, let's find L26. That's it right there, 26. Okay, now this piece here broke off of it. I hope it didn't spoil it. It doesn't appear to have, it looks okay. And we'll just take our our nippers here. Okay, now we get photo etch C8. I've gone ahead now and I've done the other two. And uh, I've gone back to my plexiglass you notice right there there's a little black dot. Well, the reason for that is so that I know that if I keep my hands and my fingers over that black dot, it's going to be in your field of view. Because if I'm not mindful of that, well, it's going to, all of a sudden you're going to see me working way down here like I was yesterday. I've got to be careful not to do that. That's really annoying. Anyway, we've got a little bit of a, a nub there. Slightly take it off. And there might be one on the other side. Yeah, just just right there. I can just feel it. Okay, that's that one. I'll just do the other two the same way. Now, if I'm smart here, okay. So we want photo etch C. And there it is. And 
I guess because I need three of them. Okay, there's two on each one of these. There's number eight. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why they give spares like that. Alright, now I'm going to have to think about this. How am I going to snip those out of there? Now I'm noticing that uh, it's sandwiched between paper or uh, cellophane. I'm imagining this has to come off. If it doesn't come off, I don't know how you're supposed to be able to get these get these out of here. Like, look at that delicate little ladder there. Oh, wow. Maybe, uh, maybe I should try and just leave leave the cellophane on one side and see what happens. Uh, and then you peel the part off of it. Let's just try that and see see how that would work. Like I say, I've never done this before. Now I would think that uh, I would probably want to go as close to the part as possible and yet maybe just leave a little bit of the um, I used to know what these were called too um, and then file it off so let's see here if I push down right yeah I think that should leave a little bit I don't know. Am I getting it? Is it still attached? Maybe I should be using a different type of knife here. Okay, I've got it angled now better for my eyes here so I can... I do believe that's loose. my very first photo edge piece and I think I should be able to sand these little tiny tabs that's the word I was looking for tabs um, yeah if you're designing something for a CNC router and you want you don't want the part to be flipping around loose when the router is almost through you put little tabs on and then you just sort of do them by hand later. Okay now I just do that two more times. Okay now I've got the tabs all filed off of this piece right here on all three of them and I think they go right up against all the way up the this shaft here because uh, if you flip it over here you can see caps in number one it uh, doesn't show this round piece at the bottom, so it must be glued up at the top. That makes sense. Yeah. wonder why they didn't make that out of plastic. No one's going to see it the way it's going to go here. Well, let's, uh, let's assemble it and see what we got here.
Well, I guess here's where the CA glue comes in play for the very first time. I imagine we just put a little tiny bit right there. It should just sort of wick its way into that. At least I would imagine that would be the way it would go. Unless maybe the thing to do would be to put the CA glue on right there and then just drop this on. Like so. Now you should all remember when we cut up the milk jugs that were made of that HDPE and the idea being is that uh, CA glue would not cure on it right away. I'm going to put a little drop of CA right there and then take a very small, small minute amount if I can touch it on here and then put this on top. Well, let's see how it goes. Now, before that cures, I think we got it. Looks good to me. I'll we'll see what happens when that cures. No, I did the other two exactly the same way. But what I want to do right now is, I just wanted, I was curious actually to see, is this going to be still a little bit liquidy? Or is it going to have solidified? And it appears to me, it's pretty much cured. It seems to be a little bit, what you might say, tacky. But you may as well say, for all intents and purposes, it's cured. Now, I was noticing when I'm using these homemade nippers that they are, when I'm cutting the sprue, they are not only cutting it, they are also spreading it. So, what is happening here is because this part here is so thick, it's a uh, breaking the tab where it's attached to the part that you want and eventually I can envision that I'm going to be actually damaging the part in other words it's going to when the tab breaks off uh, it's going to uh, take part of the part with it and I'm just wondering if it is possible here to somehow thin this out and just make it a little bit thinner yeah they don't have to be cutting steel anymore. Well, we are moving right along here and I'm starting to enjoy it a little bit better. And I think the reason is because I'm getting out of the painting. And uh, it's not that I, you know, fear the painting. I think I'm, it's because I'm not 100% sure what I should do and it's, uh, I'm kind of concerned that I might possibly be um, ruining the hull, you know, and it's sort of taking the fun out of this and worrying about, you know, filling the cracks, is it going to show and stuff like that. You know, to me, that's taking the fun out of it. Now, this is fun. And we did the anchors and we did capson number one. We made three of them. So now we have to do two of capson number two. And uh, it looks like there's no photo etched parts on it. It's all plastic. And one, two, three, four, five little parts there that I have to find. So I'm just going to go ahead and find them. Oh, these things here, I narrowed them down. I didn't take the camera and tripod down to the workshop uh, because, uh, well, I just didn't feel like it. Anyway. I, I did it the same way as I did a couple of weeks ago when I initially took this down. And I would say it's probably less than half the thickness that it was. So we'll try it out in a minute. 
Now I realized I said I was just going to go ahead and do it. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. And look, trumpeters got them all grouped together. 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. Let's see what's going to happen here with my new nippers. I think I could just cut this off right here. And get rid of that. No, maybe that's not a good idea. I think this is going to work better. Now I am sure that there's probably people wondering why is it that I don't just use my nice new Tamiya nippers to do all the nipping? Well the reason being is that I have read in a couple of places or at least heard on YouTube from a couple at least that these things do wear out. So uh, that's why I figure if I uh, do the main nipping off the sprue uh, with the uh, homemade ones and then this real fine work with the new Tamiya's well, they just might last a little longer it only stands to reason I'm only doing half the nipping Once again, I gotta be careful. I don't want to be cutting these really delicate little parts here. But if you hold them just right, yeah, it does a nice job. Almost takes no filing. Now, I realize it looks like one part is missing, but this piece right here is these pieces all assembled. Now, I think if I'm smart here, I'm going to do a bit of a dry run. Now, you notice on this piece right here, let's see if I can show you, the inside is not perfectly round. It's a bit of a almost like a little sort of a flange type thing right there where the tweezer is pointing. Now the idea is that this piece here is supposed to go in like this. Is there any special way it's supposed to go in? Oh yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, you notice it's a bit of a flat spot, flat spot right here? Well this flat spot should go right there. Okay. I'm trying to do this so that you can see it and uh, it may or may not work. Okay, I think I got it. Now then there's little tiny, I actually picked up the piece by one of them little tiny pin here that's supposed to go in these holes. So there's one there, and there's one there. Incredibly small parts here. But they seem to be extremely well made. Now I may just have to turn the camera off and use my fingers here. But uh, I think you get the idea of how it's supposed to go. 
And then I guess this one here, you notice there's a little little pin right there that I picked picked it up by. Well, it's supposed to go in here. This is like putting together a mechanical wristwatch. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Yeah. Okay, I think I've got it here. Looks good to me. Whoops. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll just uh, take it apart here and uh, use a tiny little bit of uh, solvent and hopefully none of the solvent's going to show anywhere. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, it looks like it's not glued together. And uh, I'm going to say, well, there's a good reason for that. And you're expecting me to say, because it's not. But it is. I was just extremely careful with the solvent. Very, very little solvent there. Okay. Yeah. I've done the other one now exactly the same way. I can sort of see a little bit of uh, residue of the glue there on the top. I'm hoping that the paint is going to cover that. I think it'll be okay. Now we have some intakes to do here, and they do require photo etch. Four different pieces, it looks like. I'm going to want to make sure I don't get these mixed up because they appear to be different. Like this one might be different from this one, I'm not sure. Yeah, it is different. It looks the same at first, but yeah, and this one is different from this one. I guess that's why each one takes a different piece of photo etch. None of them are exactly the same. All right, I'll slip on the macro lens and see if we can get a nice close look at cutting photo etch. Now, you know what? I just noticed something here. This piece is this piece. These are the same pieces. So first you put on number 27 and then it looks like you put on 28. Okay, 27 goes here, and 28 goes here. Well, maybe once I get the pieces cut, I'll be able to see that, you know, what's what. Now, I've gone ahead and I've removed D32 here, and I'm going to leave uh, 21 on the sprue. Get this the right orientation around here. Okay, so that'd be like that. Now we got our photo etch pieces here. Now you can see we need 27. Well, there's 27. And 28. There's 28. Now 27, you can actually see through it. But 28 is sort of, you can't. Now, does, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, because if I put 27 on first, then 28 is going to cover it, and you're not going to see it. Maybe if I get the pieces cut off, I'll be able to see better what's going on.
Now these pieces are absolutely ridiculously detailed. Don't know if you can see it, but on this one, there are little, I don't know, like it would be like maybe brackets or something or to represent brackets to hold it onto the main part of it and uh, it's hard to know what has to be filed away and what doesn't now I've paged ahead a little bit in the instructions and I think this one is supposed to go something like this in there something like that now this one okay is supposed to go at a bit of an angle in an upward position to represent the open flap and I guess in heavy seas the idea is it would be closed down over that grate and uh, yeah to be glued on something like that. Well, that took half an hour. Well, maybe not that long. Can you imagine how, how, how am I gonna paint that so that those tiny little micro holes that form the grill or grate do not get plugged up? Well, I think that's it for today. I'm gonna do the other pieces that are similar to this the same way. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>